So about four years ago, I did a video on CCTV and I questioned whether or not it was worth having 4K CCTV and I stand by that because at the time, well firstly, H.265, which is the, uh, the upgrade, funnily enough, to H.264, much better compression and is widely used in 4K video encoding, it just wasn't as widespread then. The hardware wasn't as readily available. The support in general wasn't as widely available. So cameras had one choice. They could either, uh, sorry, two choices. They could either encode in H.264 and go with massive data rates to get a decent image quality, or they could encode in H.265 and then have the potential of devices not really supporting it well. Secondly, the sensors that were used for 4K, they, obviously because they're very small sensors on the cameras used in uh, CCTV cameras, they just weren't as good and they tended to just look like a, a mess, well, something like that was possibly just upscaled HD or something. The resolution benefits, you know, although you got a bigger image, you didn't necessarily get more detail out of it. However, in 2021, four years on, we're in a different place, and today I'm looking at this. This is the Reolink RLC810A. This is a 4K, so an 8 megapixel, or UHD if you like, 3840 by 2160 full resolution CCTV camera. It's power over Ethernet, fully waterproof, and this thing is an absolute beast. So yeah, a bit of a spoiler alert. I'm a big fan of this camera, and if all you want is whether a recommendation on whether or not to go for a camera like this, I would highly recommend this because, I, yeah, I love it. I love the image quality that comes out of it. I like the build. I like the design. I like the... It's super sturdy. It's just simple to use, and the software, as always with Reolink products, is great. I can't find too much bad to say about this, so if that's all you need from this video, fantastic. But stay tuned if you want to see a little bit more uh, of the software. Of course, you want to see the image that comes out of this thing. And I'll go on to list the pros and cons, even though I've already gone through some of them at the end of the video. First of all, though, let's have a look at what's in the box. You get everything you need, really. The only thing you don't get is a 12 volt adapter. And where does that fit in? Well, I'll just take you around the camera quickly now. There's not too much to see on the camera. It's a fairly sort of sealed and simple device. But uh, first things first, you've got your three connections on the end. Uh, you've got a reset button here. I didn't know what this one did to start with. You've got a little reset button, just a little micro switch, which allows you to just step up to the camera and just, just tap that if you want, if you want to just do a kind of hard reset on it. Then you've got the ethernet cable, which of course provides uh, power as well, if you have power over ethernet. And I think it's uh, common to think that that might be sort of supplied as standard, but it isn't. So do make sure that you're able to supply power over your ethernet cables that you're using. There's gonna be two situations where you are probably able to do that. Uh, your standard router from your ISP won't have power coming through ethernet cables. Uh, any kind of managed switch generally won't, um, or standard switch won't, or any kind of hub or anything like that, won't have power coming through those ethernet cables. There are two ways in which you can do it. Firstly, you uh, if you have like an NVR, a dedicated CCTV recorder that has Ethernet ports on it, the chances are that they're going to have power coming out of those Ethernet ports and they're going to be able to supply power over this using the standard 802.3AF. And the other option is that you buy an injector. So it's just a little black box that has, a, uh, has your standard Ethernet coming in, pumps power into it and has another Ethernet cable coming in. Out. And that's what I had to do to test this because I don't have any power over Ethernet in my home. And then the third cable here is 12 volts because if you don't have power over Ethernet, you can just supply this with normal 12 volts as well. But as I mentioned, it doesn't come with a 12 volt adapter in the box, so you'd have to supply one of those separately. Carrying on around the camera, 
As far as mounting it to the wall is concerned, well, that's just a three screw affair, super simple. And everything is adjusted with this little screw here, which means that this loose, loosens up the ball and socket joint there. You can really rotate this and get this into pretty much the exact position you want to frame your image perfectly. Really simple to use and it's super secure once it's tightened. Feels sturdy, definitely isn't gonna go anywhere. Um, I've had cheaper cameras in the past where you're tightening little sort of screws and left, right and center to get it in the exact right position. Horrible. On the back also here we've got the uh, micro SD port. It's a sealed port, so sealed with two screws with a rubber gasket. And I've got a one to eight gig card in here, but you can put up to two, five, six gigabytes in here. Not that much for 4K video, perfectly sufficient for a motion detection camera. The whole body is metal, aluminum alloy, I guess, and it's all waterproof, so you can have this outside, whatever weather conditions, not a problem. On the front, we've got our lens, and then round the lens, as standard with CCTV, we have 18 infrared LEDs, and they state that this will light up an area up to 100 foot, so that's kind of what, 30 meters? And that's, that's decent. I mean, to cover 30 meters distance with enough infrared to light up a face or light up a person, that's some claim. And that's basically done because of the fact they've got a massive whopping load of infrared LEDs there on the front of the camera. Although the camera itself is very basic, most of the functionality really comes into its own when you look at the app because that just allows you access to the massive amount of features that uh, come with the Rio Link cameras. So here I am in the app. I'll try and go through this as quickly as I can, but it will take a, a bit of time just purely because there are quite a few things to go through. So stick with me and we'll see how quick we can get through it. So these are my devices. I've got a few cameras set up here. And the one I'm looking at here is the 4K camera down here at the bottom. So if I just go into that camera now, it opens up the stream straight away. And you can see those two big black boxes on there. They are privacy masks that I've added specifically uh, for this camera just to cover the uh, windows of the houses there across the road. Now, I wouldn't normally have a camera set up in this position, but this is the best place to test it that I've found because it gives me access to, you know, it lets me see kind of number plates and people at a fair distance and just lets me see the, the real benefits of a 4K camera, I suppose. So there we go. We've got a, a view of the street, someone walking extremely slowly up the street there, but we have already seen in the top right-hand side that that has triggered an alarm. So we've got someone moving there and it's triggered an alarm, which means the camera will have recorded a very small portion of uh, video footage for this, uh, just to capture that person walking up the street. So let's start <laughs> at the beginning. I suppose the main thing that people are gonna wanna see here is the image quality. So this currently that we're looking at now is the lowest of the low image quality. This is a 640 by 360 image. And I have the option by tapping on this low button here to increase it to a balanced rate, which increases the bit rate from about five or 600 up to just over 1.2 megabits per second. And that increases the resolution and then we have the final 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160. And there we go, we're streaming that now at about six megabits per second of data. So from that sort of distance, can you tell too much, you know, when it's cramped up like that on a portrait on a phone? Can you see that much difference? Well, not really. And that's why these options are so good because you don't necessarily need to, um, to have this running uh, at such a high bit rate, you know, you don't need to stream six megabits per second across your network to your phone. And then we go, someone else walking there, you saw the alarm, hopefully in the top right hand side. Uh, but what I'll do for you now is I will zoom in on a number plate and show you the difference. So I can pinch and zoom on this on the screen, I can move in. And there we go. So we've got this car here, next to my uh, little scooter. And can you read that number plate? Well, this is at the lowest resolution. Not really. Let's increase to the balanced resolution and see whether we can read the number plate. Let's zoom in on that car again. Mm, not really, no. Now, let's increase to 4K and see what a difference it makes to reading number plates. Let's zoom in. Can you read that number plate now? <laughs> yes, I think you can. And let's just move across the road. Oh, there's another car there. Uh, let's move across the road to this one. There we go, another one across the road there. 
and just get an idea of how much we're zooming in there. Let's just zoom out to the original image. There we go. That, I think, should give you a good enough demonstration of how much resolution you're getting with a 4K camera. But let's go into a few more of the options. You've got uh, the uh, audio. You can enable audio here. Uh, with the little symbol that this the audio is enabled on this at the moment so it does pick up audio really really well so although technically i don't think you should uh, record audio on a cctv camera i have got this enabled at the moment uh, but i wouldn't normally do that on cctv cameras and then the button next to it is just to just to take a snapshot of this particular image so if i hit that now it does a snapshot of the image at that resolution and uh, in fact i think it probably always takes it at the high resolution and then if i tap the one next to it i can do a little video it's just it'll just record a small portion to my phone so let's say i'll just record a, a 10 second clip here and then tap it again to stop recording and it saves it directly to my camera roll and if i want to go into um i can tap this button here to go into landscape mode i won't do that now because i'll keep this in kind of portrait for the purposes of this recording uh, but let's just have a quick look let's just go out of the app a second go into my camera into my uh, pictures here and you can see that was from yesterday so we've got this one from today that's the one i've just done and look at the image quality on that the colors are spot on all the detail on it you've got the full detail you know you can see everything you need to see absolutely brilliant look at this look at the detail on that sign i mean it's not perfect but it is tiny it's my it's a long way away so uh that is a uh, yeah well impressive and then the video here just a small video nothing actually happened unfortunately so uh that's not particularly good but let's go back into the app now and it just starts the stream straight away. So I'm just going to change that down to fluent for now. So I'm not having to do too much uh, streaming. And go back into the uh, playback section here. I go, sorry, I'll go into the playback section here, the bottom. And this now gives me the videos that are being recorded. And you can see all the blue dots along the, the blue bars rather, along the bottom uh, of the screen and this is where a clip has been recorded so at night time there's far far less motion detection so you can see there are hardly any there's hardly any recording at night only when there needs to be uh, so if i can i can tap on this bottom button here and i can then select which of these alerts i want to see so if i only want to see when a car came past i can unselect the person and i can unselect the general alerts and now i only have instances where cars have come past or at least what the camera thinks is a car coming past so if i then pick the first one of these which was in position last night so this is uh the camera at night time. I'm getting a bit of a infrared reflection off the roof of our house here, which does impact the exposure of the camera a little bit. And because this is permanently powered up, this camera, we have a situation where you, it can pre-record as well. So it looks like we've got a person walking down here as well on this one. Can't see too much on that, but um, is there a car on this at all? I'm not sure. Doesn't look like there's a car on this one at all. So let's just go to the next one and see whether this one has a car on it. Should be around halfway. Or oh, there we go. Yeah. So there's the car just going across. Oops, I just uh, scrolled out of that. So there we go. You get, you get the idea. You can see there's a car and there's someone. Looks like there's someone coming and getting out of the car. Are they delivering something? So... From that sort of distance, even at 4K, you know, you're not necessarily going to get an ID from that, but you are talking about putting, placing someone in a certain place at a certain time, and that's a that's big part of uh, CCTV. So let's go out of the playback section now. I'm just going to enable all these again and, and go into um, just exit playback and go back into normal mode and then i'm going to go into the settings and just have a quick look through the uh, settings for you all right so here's our model number at the top and if you go into there you can uh, set various you can set the camera name and stuff like that i'm not going to go into there because there's all information about the camera in there which i don't really want to publish uh, i go into the display section and i can rotate the screen i can change the quality so i can change the bit rate for example and the clear resolution can be full uh, full 4k or can I, I can reduce it change the frame rate bit rate that type of thing 
and uh, I can you put anti flicker on there to avoid flickering in different sort of um, uh, mains environments, and change the day and night mode, adjust the brightness, change the cam where the camera name is located, all that sort of stuff. And then I've got a couple of options down at the bottom for exposure, adjusting the exposure and ex adjusting the backlight of the camera. And they do make a difference. You know, you can just tweak it to get the image exactly as you need it. Going out of here now, detection alarm sections have a detection zone. So you can say where you want to look for st stuff going on and where you don't. That's not set up quite right at the moment because I've moved the camera when I was filming before. But uh, all I can do, I can just delete the whole lot from there. And then I can take the pen and I can say, well, I don't want to detect any motion in this section. <laughs> here and there's not going to be anything happening in the sky there's not going to be anything happening on the roof here there we go save and then sensitivity can be set anything between mega insensitive or, or super sensitive i've got it set you know about 85 percent, something like that and it seems to be about right e enable push notifications for email alerts or notifications to your phone just on you know message kind of like a message and just a notification coming up share the camera you can do time lapses as well which uh, is a nice little feature i suppose but not really something i would need to have on a cctv camera generally and then we have the advanced section as well where i can add users so you can have admin users on the camera but you can also have regular users on this camera too date and time can be set directly from the phone and then you can also have ftp uploads as well so you can enable ftp and you can upload your footage and your images to an ftp server whether it be uh, a NAS in your house or an FTP server you've got set up in your house or alternatively maybe off-site storage because of course the Rio Link cloud storage doesn't work in the UK yet and that's a massive big flaw I don't know why they do that but it doesn't matter so much with this camera because you can set up FTP upload and get that site get that footage off-site because uh, that's where it's going to do the best you know it takes footage someone takes the camera they've got your footage but of course once it's been sent off site to an ftp server it's safe and then you can enable the recording uh, audio there set the infrared lights on the camera to either be off or to come on automatically and yeah there we go i mean that's that's about it i think um i did oh in the display section i did set the did do the privacy mask i'll just show you those quickly because uh, they are really simple to add so if I just remove and continue that will remove them from there so I can just simply add a privacy mask by dragging over there stick that there drag over that house stick that there save and there we go there's our privacy masks set up all right so this is a review after all even though I think it's pretty clear what I think about this camera so far but um pros and cons well it's got a lot of pros. I can't really think of too many uh, bad points about this at all. I'm going to struggle with this, so let's keep this fairly brief. Pros. Image quality is excellent. Colours are always good. 4K resolution really does look like 4K, and the image quality that comes off it is excellent. IDing number plates, as you saw there on the uh, soft in the um, app, is is great. IDing faces, the, just the detail on this camera is just excellent, and the price. 20% off they have on their website at the moment. I mean, that's a time of recording, of course. I think the standard price for this is somewhere in the region of kind of 80, 90 pounds. They've got, they got it for 63.99 on their website at the moment. 63.99 for a power over ethernet 4K camera with this kind of quality and the sort of software support that Reolink provide, i.e. they have frequent updates when things go wrong. They take on board what customers say and they make adjustments to the app for the better rather than a bit of software that never gets touched for years. That's worth a lot of money. For $63.99, this is an absolute bargain. Let's take a look at the cons. Well, I can't think of any. I, I, I spoke at the start about sort of data rates on 4K, and, and I suppose the data rate on this camera is quite high. If you set it to kind of the default of about 6.5 megabits per second, to have 6.5 megabits constantly streaming across your network is quite a lot, I suppose. If you had multiple cameras, it ends up being quite a lot of traffic. So that's a downside to 4K. But the reality is that the motion detection on this, which you saw in the software, around vehicle detection, person detection, and um, and just, you know, all detect everything, is, is, is decent. I mean, it, it's good. So you're not going to get too many false positives when it comes to motion detection. So your camera can sit there and not be recording most of the time, which means that a 1 to 8 gig card, as I've got in here, even at those high data rates, is going to last you for well over a week. And... 
yeah, as far as I'm concerned, that is decent enough. So yes, it's a high data rate on 4K, but it's totally manageable with a camera like this. The other thing is I have had a couple of occasions where the app didn't connect to the camera first time. I don't know whether or not that is my um, network. I, I, can't, I can't say for certain whether it's my network or not. I've tried it in a couple of different locations in my house, uh, but ultimately where I have the camera mounted, I have to take it through a wire. So I plug it into ethernet, but the ethernet goes into a wireless node. So it's being carried over wireless. I cannot get this straight into a router. So I'm gonna blame my network for that but I have had a few occasions where I've just kind of connected and it does connect into stream and then it says connection failed. No big deal because you go into it again and it comes up first time. Just a little thing, I suppose, to mention if I'm gonna list any bad points. Anyway, that's about all I've got to say on it today. Fairly brief section there on the review just because I find it a really great camera and, uh, and that's about it. So if you'd like to support the channel, I will put links for this camera down in the description. They are all genius links, and that means that you click on that single link, and wherever you are in the world, you'll get redirected to the suitable store for you. But that's only if you'd like to support the channel. If you want to just go and find it yourself online, that's fine too. Uh, and thanks very much for watching. If you've got any questions on the camera, any questions about what it does, if it does this, doesn't do this, if I know the answer, I will reply within 24 hours. But other than that, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye. I've been on the road, I've been doing shows. Now we ain't steak, remember sleeping on the floor. We're still in at the gas station when the time's cold. In the kitchen, hot still trying to flip it out the stove. Rocking fake J's, praying that nobody knows. Watch him take my dog away, it was way too hard to stay composed. Fight to see the light of day, all this blood on my clothes. I was tired every day, green light, it's time to go. I don't wanna live life fast or die too young. Die too young. 100 miles per hour, I might crash, cause a good die young. Yeah, a good die young.